What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 19 in the seventh grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question tells us that a recipe requires a quarter cup of oil for every two thirds of a cup of water. And we're trying to figure out how much oil in cups is needed per cup of water. And this will actually give us a chance to practice the two different ways we could enter an answer into our gridded response boxes. But for now, in order to figure out the problem itself, We'll need to know how to use number tables and proportions, and I think this time we're gonna have to use proportions, even though there was another question earlier where I said that since I see fractions, number tables are probably easier. Um, and then we're gonna have to figure out how to multiply and divide fractions, and we're probably gonna end up having to do each of those at least once in this question. So, let's go ahead and get started. If I want to write out a number table, then I can just call my two columns oil and water, and it makes sense because um, math tests and seventh graders tend to go together like oil and water. If you've ever heard that expression, they tend to not like each other, especially seventh graders not liking math tests. That's why I do this. But essentially, I'm going to start with this information that the problem gives me. It's a quarter cup of oil for every two-thirds of a cup of water. And now... If I see how much oil is needed per cup, I'm thinking that's one cup. So a quarter cup of oil needs two-thirds of water, and, or two-thirds of a cup of water. So how much oil will we need for one cup of water? That's the entire point of this question. So now, if I were to write this in a number table, I would be looking for a nice pattern that I could multiply from right to left to get to this blank, or up to down to get to this blank, Unfortunately, with the knowledge that I have as a finishing seventh grader, I don't think I see that. If you see something, I think I know what you're thinking, and that's fantastic. Go ahead and do it that way if that's easier for you. But for the benefit of people who can't recognize that kind of pattern that easily, I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. And the reason why I say we'll need to use proportions is because this method of cross-multiplying that I'm about to use you'll see much more often in proportions where I would have two-thirds divided by one equals one-fourth divided by some number I don't know. But right now I'm comfortable using it here in this context too. And essentially, I'm going to need to multiply one-fourth times one and two-thirds times my unknown. So let me come over to this side of the gridded boxes and do that. One-fourth times one equals two-thirds times our blank. I will call this one whole or one one. Multiply my numerators and denominators to get one fourth. What a surprise. We multiplied it by one and it gave us what we started with. That's exactly what we were expecting actually. Pardon the sarcasm that tells us that we're doing the problem right so far. Um, so now I know that one fourth equals two thirds times something. And it's at this point that I prefer, given the choice in a problem like this between equation ideas and fact families, I actually prefer fact families. Because if I know that one-fourth equals two-thirds times something, then I also know that one-fourth divided by two-thirds equals that same thing. And now I have a dividing fractions problem on my hands. I need to break out the memory trick that reminds me of Kentucky Fried Chicken, keep change flip, where I'm going to keep one fourth the same. One fourth stays at one fourth. I change dividing to multiplying, and then I flip two thirds so it becomes three halves. And at this point, there's actually no simplifying I need to do. I just need to multiply numerators and denominators. 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 2 is 8. My answer looks like it's going to be 3 eighths, but I want to do one more thing and just check that in this equation just to make sure. So I will go ahead and use my brown marker to check this and see what 2 thirds times 3 eighths will give me. Now I can use my regular multiply the numerators and simplify trick. I'm going to go ahead and use my bow tie trick for this to demonstrate how it works. So I'm checking for common factors between 2 and 3. Can't find any. I check for common factors between 2 and 8, and I can actually find one. That factor is 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 
Now I check for common factors between four and three. There are none. I check for common factors between three and three, and that I can actually find three. Three divided by three is one. Three divided by three is one. This leaves me with one times one for my numerator and one times four for my denominator. One times one is one. One times four is four. I was expecting one fourth if this was my answer and that's what I got. So I know that three eighths is my answer. Last thing I need to do is actually grid my response and I'm going to go ahead and use the magic of editing to make this stuff in the middle go away so I can do that. Ta-da, it's gone. So now that I know my answer is 3 eighths, there are two ways I can write this. I can do 3 slash 8, find my 3 bubble, find my slash bubble, and find my 8 bubble. Or in case you got a decimal answer for this, you should have gotten 0.375. So the other way that we'll do this is we're going to try to put in 0.375 or 375 thousandths. And again, I'll use the magic of editing to make this go away, but this is one way we could see our answer written. Ta-da, again. I'm not 100% sure, but just to be safe, I'm going to call this 0 0.375, or 0 and 375 thousandths. And once again, I find my 0 bubble, find my decimal point bubble, find my 3 bubble, find my 7 bubble, and find my 5 bubble. So those are two ways that we can write our answer, the fraction form and the decimal form. Either way, they're equivalent. They represent the same number, which is 3 eighths or 375 thousandths.